In a recent press release, Genentech, the drug company that markets Ocrevus, stated that in a six-year extension study, Ocrevus, in comparison to the injectable drug Rebif, decreased the need for use of a cane by 50%. In this video, we'll take a look at the press release and some of the data behind it. Let's have some fun. April 28th was a pretty lousy day for me. I had been asked to help out in the emergency department seeing neurology patients to alleviate some of the burden of the emergency medicine doctors during the COVID-19 pandemic, which is a very stressful environment. I give a salute to the heroes doing it on a day-in, day-out basis. But also, when I tried to leave, my car was inoperable because some clown had apparently climbed under my car and pulled out the catalytic converter. Apparently, this is something that people do. But perhaps what was a lousy day for me is a good day for you because of the news that we got from Genentech. Now, I don't have a particular financial conflict of interest, but I should say that the company that made this press release is Genentech, which is the company that markets Ocrevus, so they do have a conflict of interest, and sometimes these press releases don't match up exactly with future published data, so please keep that in mind. By the way, I'm Brandon Bieber, and I make videos about multiple sclerosis every Wednesday, so please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications and if you find this video informative, please click like. Now, I'll give a brief background on Ocrevus. I have another video specifically on this if you want to take a look. But basically, Ocrevus is a disease-modifying therapy given by infusion through the IV once every six months. And it works on B cells, or B lymphocytes, which are cells that make antibodies and are very important in generating inflammation in multiple sclerosis. CD20 is a transmembrane protein that Ocrevus binds to, and it basically destroys all of the B cells, and it takes several months for them to return, very similar to the mechanism of action of rituximab and ofatumumab. And the drug has known side effects such as infusion reactions, rash, hives, wheezing. It also weakens the immune system and can cause certain infections in some people, though usually milder. It's known that in people who have hepatitis B and C, the virus can reactivate and cause liver problems. Also, there's some preliminary data that the drug may be linked to breast cancer, although this isn't fully known. Some people, in addition to having an infusion reaction, can have some vague symptoms for weeks or even months later, which is thought to be sort of a low-level immunological reaction to the medication that is called serum sickness. And there's been a single case of progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, the feared brain infection caused by the JC virus. Again, watch the other video if you want to take a look. Now, this extension study is an extension of the two OPERA trials, OPERA 1 and OPERA 2, which is a trial in people with relapsing MS under age 55, and it was a trial against a comparator, which was Rebif, beta interferon 1A subcutaneously three times a week, which is one of the lower efficacy injectable medications. When you've heard the term ABCR, this is the R. And you can see some of the data, for instance, from OPERA 1. This is looking at cumulative MRI lesions, new and gadolinium-enhancing lesions. And you can see there are quite a few in the Rebif group, but much, much fewer in the Ocrevus or Ocrelizumab group. And so this was very effective. And we see very similar data in OPERA 2. Way more lesions in Rebif and way fewer in Ocrevus. So Ocrevus basically destroyed Rebif on MRI data. We can also look at disability progression. This is when you examine the patient and they're worse than they were before, and then you examine them three months later and confirm that they are in fact worse. And you can see that 15.2% had disability progression in the Rebif group compared to only 9.8% in the Ocrevus group. And this is looking at 24-week disability or six-month disability progression, and it's pretty similar. So 12% worsened taking uh, Rebif versus 7.6% on Ocrevus. And this was, in fact, statistically significant. Now let's look at the data from the press release. So this is a total of six years of data taking both of these studies, OPERA 1 and OPERA 2. And I'll give the caveat that sometimes there isn't 100% follow-up. Obviously, there's less than 100% follow-up. And also, these patients are not randomized. So we're looking at the people who were originally randomized to Ocrevus versus the people who were originally randomized for Rebif. And they were only in the randomized trial for two years. And then this is the open label extension. And basically, everyone on Rebif was changed over to Ocrevus. And so we're looking at, does the initial two years of Ocrevus really make a difference? 
And some people have criticized the outcomes in traditional trials. For instance, Professor George Ebers thought that a two-year follow-up was too short and the outcomes were very meaningless. We want to see major outcomes like time until you need a cane. Well, here you go, Professor Ebers. Here is one such trial. It's not randomized the whole six years, only for two years, but we are looking at a very meaningful data point, which is time to reach EDSS6. And I have a separate video on the expanded disability status score rating scale, if you want to check that out. But basically, an EDSS of six means that you require a cane in order to walk 100 meters. None of these individuals who originally entered the trial had to use a cane because you couldn't have an EDSS over 5.5. And so if you look at the end of the trial, 4.3% who were originally randomized to, re to excuse me, to Ocrevus needed a cane versus 7.2% on Rebif. And this is a 49% difference. So they decreased the number who needed a cane by about half. Now, in absolute terms, it's not a huge difference. This is only an absolute 3% fewer who needed a cane, but that's just because these are a lot of younger people, all of whom who originally had relapsing MS, so not many are really going to require a cane after six years. They also showed in a separate analysis that Ocrevus was linked to slowed atrophy of the thalamus. Uh, the thalamus is a gray matter structure that relays sensory information along with many other functions, and it's known that thalamic atrophy or loss of thalamic volume is linked to worsening disability in multiple sclerosis. Now, of course, I do have some critiques. One, this is unpublished data, so we'll take a look at what the actual publication looks at, particularly the percent who followed up. I'm always a little bit skeptical when I see that there's very poor follow-up, and the reason is because there could be a bias. Maybe the people who got randomized to Ocrevus are so excited and they want to follow up so they can prove the data were effective, whereas people were, who were randomized to Rebif may not be so enthusiastic, particularly if they were tra traveling far and wide to get to the center. And the center of the trial was not where they are normally treated for multiple sclerosis. Now, a Connor Devine, who's a known critique of disease-modifying therapy and multiple sclerosis, responded to this on Twitter by saying, hey, maybe there were some differences between the groups. Maybe the people in the Ocrevus group had a better diet, a better lifestyle. Now, I find that to be very unlikely, but there could be other imbalances between the two groups. Maybe, for instance, the group who followed up in the Ocrevus arm were a little bit younger or healthier overall or had fewer uh, other comorbidities. It's very possible. Also, you have to consider the initial entry criteria. These individuals tended to be younger. They tended to have active lesions on MRI and have recent relapses and have few comorbidities and not have things like hepatitis C. And so, you know, they were more likely to respond to Ocrevus in the first place. These data don't necessarily, you know, correspond with what the experience will be with everyone with multiple sclerosis. But anyways, I think it's great news overall. What do you think about this press release. What is your experience with Ocrevus? Have you had side effects? Have you had benefits from the medication? Please post in the comments below. And if you have requests for future videos, please post in the comments below.